Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be talking you through my top 10 books of Q2 of 2021. So this is April to June 2021. Dane reads. I read like 80, 90 books, something like that. Uh, these are my top 10. So in at number 10, we have The Others by James Herbert. So uh, this is basically, it's kind of got like detective novel vibes, but there's a bit of the supernatural thrown in as well. Uh, this guy who is a Hollywood actor, sort of dies and then he gets reborn to make amendments for his sins uh, and the body he's reborn into is a guy with some like physical deformities and this guy ends up creating a detective agency and he gets hired by this lady who's convinced that her baby is still alive even though the doctors told her that it died he goes off to investigate all kinds of shenanigans happen it's very good it has vibes of like the institute by stephen king even though it was written before that so uh, yeah definitely read it in at number nine speaking of stephen king we have later so this is one of his new books uh, it's published under the hard case crime imprint uh, and this is basically about a guy who can speak to people after they're dead and uh, his mum knows about it his mum's girlfriend who is a policewoman a bit of a bent cop as it were um, she kind of gets him involved to uh, help her out with some stuff uh, as you can imagine with Stephen King it's quite dark but uh, quite a short read for him as well and just uh, top stuff at number eight we have clothes 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 music 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 boys 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 by Viv Albertine so she was the guitarist for the slits she was in a band with Sid Vicious she was knocking around with Johnny Rotten for a while uh, she was uh, her boyfriend was Mick Jones of The Clash so she was kind of in around that punk scene of the 70s and it kind of covers that but also her in later life, some of the medical issues that she had and then her kind of rediscovering herself after a kind of a loveless marriage with a very unsupportive dickhead of her husband. Uh, so it's like a rock and roll memoir basically and I love that kind of stuff. At number seven we have Illuminated Poems by Allen Ginsberg. So if you've read a lot of Ginsberg this probably won't be new to you because as far as I could tell they weren't new poems but what was really cool, I mean it's called Illuminated Poems poems it's illustrated poems basically I can't remember the artist's name who illustrated them but uh, they took a load of Ginsberg's poems made them look stunning and this is like you know literally every page of this book I would happily have on my wall as a print uh, so if you're a Ginsberg fan it's definitely one you should check out and actually not a bad little introduction to his work as well at number six we have Stephen King again with Bazaar of Bad Dreams so this is a short story collection I actually read it during a visit to see my mum in Tamworth uh, I always take Stephen King books away with me when I know I'm going to spend a lot of time travelling. And obviously as with any short story collection, there are some stories I really liked, some not so much. But overall it was a great little collection, uh, showing Stephen King still got it, you know, even though you do get the vibe that these are just a bunch of random stories from all over the place that he's just sort of thrown together. There was even one that he wrote about like a, a Kindle that, like basically you could read books on it from authors like say Hemingway in another reality Hemingway didn't shoot himself and he wrote another book and so uh, yeah some cool ideas in it at number five we have Oceans of Venus by Isaac Asimov so this is a lucky star novel uh, these are really fun that he originally published them under the pseudonym of Paul French and I don't know why he used the pseudonym because a they're pretty good so I personally would want to take ownership of them but B also it's so obviously Asimov that I don't think he really had anyone fooled uh, they kind of like well, the first book is, uh, like, the guy is called David Star, Lucky Star, and the first book is called Space Ranger. And basically, it's just a nice little sort of sci-fi detective series, I guess. You don't need to read them in order, although I probably would recommend it if you can, but Oceans of Venus is probably my second favourite of the lot behind uh, Space Ranger. At number four, we have The Fog by James Herbert. So I would still say that The Rats is my favourite James Herbert novel, but The Fog is a very close second. Obviously it's very similar to like The Mist by Stephen King as well. Uh, basically there's this fog going around, it may or may not be sentient, and when people breathe it in, they start to act crazy and do unpredictable stuff. Uh, including one memorable scene where the entire population of Bournemouth commits mass suicide by walking into the sea. And number three we have I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou is obviously, you know, a legend, uh, incredible poet, she even wrote cookbooks. This is the first book of her memoirs, it covers a lot of her childhood, and she had a really rough childhood. I mean, there are trigger warnings here. Ugh. Sorry, I've got a sticky tab on my foot. There are trigger warnings here for pretty much everything, like she was sexually abused, there's a lot of racism going on. Um, but what is interesting is that she takes these really dark subjects and she just writes about them honestly and brutally, but in this really like beautiful language. You can tell that she's a poet 
from this book, even though it's non-fiction. At number two, we have Cat and Hot Tin Roof by Tennessee Williams. So this is a play. Uh, I then watched the movie of it as well, which was pretty good. Uh, my edition also had like the different ending because there was a slightly different ending for the Broadway version of the play. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's complicated. It's about family and the interplay of relationships within this family. Uh, there's a guy who's basically a bit of a drunk. There's a dad who uh, thinks he has a spastic bowel, which is the old term for irritable bowel syndrome, which I have. Um, but actually it turns out he has cancer, which is what my health anxiety tells me I have. So I kind of relate quite a lot to that as well. Uh, overall, just really beautifully written play. One I'd love to go and see perform one day. And that leaves us with number one, which is The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis. So you've probably heard of the uh, Netflix adaptation of this. It was a very true adaptation as well. Like the book and the, the miniseries are very, very similar. Like they, I don't think they really missed anything out. They didn't really change much. A lot of the dialogue is word for word. The only difference with the book really is A, like Tevis's writing style is just incredible. Uh, he writes like in a lot of short scenes, which I really like. It kind of really helps to make it feel as though things are moving, you know? Um, it was so good, like just from the writing style, that I know I want to read the rest of Walter Tevis's stuff now. But in particular, what you don't get from the Netflix show, which you do get from the book, is you can kind of see inside Beth's head while she's playing these chess games. I should tell you what it's about in case you haven't seen the series. It's about a young uh, chess protege in like the late 50s, early 1960s, and uh, she's a woman in a man's world, you know? Um, and yeah, just really well written, cracking story, definitely read it. Especially if you like the show, you're going to like the book. So there we have it, those are my Q2 10 favourite books. Uh, I will be doing a Q3 and a Q4 10 favourite books and then at the end of the year I always put them all together and uh, choose my top books of the year, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But in the meantime, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.